This is an SM Media production. Hi folks and welcome to the latest episode of Golf Talk right here on SM Media. I'm Scott McPite. It's a pleasure as always to be your host. It is the first episode of 2024, so happy new year to all our viewers. And we are in for an exciting year in the golfing world. I think it could be a year of change. I think it could be a year of excitement. And to join me to go through a wee prediction show for this episode, it's a pleasure to welcome, first of all, it's a pleasure to always have on the show, uh, the one and only Andy Fullen. Hi Scott, um, hi Ben, how you doing? Um, thanks for inviting me on. Um, always uh, look forward to talking about, about golf. Obviously, um, doesn't kind of quite feel like the golf season yet because it's still freezing cold and um, winter greens and stuff like that. But uh, the PJ Tour just on Sunday there from Hawaii certainly kind of wets the appetite a wee bit. So, um, so yeah, no, delighted. Thanks for thanks for inviting me on. It's a pleasure, Ben. I always get to the stage where. When we get to the mass, when we get to the turn of the year, it's it's time to look ahead to Augusta and to join us to look back as well. So a pleasure to welcome back. We had him on once and he, he did so well. We've asked him on again. It's a pleasure to welcome on Ben Grant. Yes, Scott. Thanks for having me. I'm I'm glad to be back. I mean, didn't know how it went the last time, so obviously you've asked me back. So well. must have been successful. So we're back. Plenty to talk about in the golfing world, both on the course and off the course. I guess so. Um, plenty to plenty to discuss. Yeah, we'll di- dissect obviously kind of what our, what our predictions are for the year. We've obviously got four majors, but Andy, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about how good twenty twenty three was. Obviously, four really exciting majors. European, the Europeans winning the Ryder Cup, I thought in brilliant fashion. Obviously, the the Solheim Cup went well as well. Mm-hmm. Just been a really good year for golf, and after a couple of years where obviously it was a bit chaotic. It's nice to get a bit of a, <coughs> a bit a bit more focusing on what was going on. I thought I, I thought the Ryder Cup. I would say I've spoken to a lot of people. I think the Ryder Cup was one of my favourite events of the year this year, just in terms of sport, just for the excitement and the drama. I think it's been a really good year for golf, and I think we could be in for an even better year this year. Yeah, it was uh, it got off the quality of golf as well. I mean, in the start of the year, even um, pre Masters, uh, the signature events in the PJ Tour that the Ram and, and Sheffler were just, just going at it um before that and quality of golf was, fen- was absolutely phenomenal. Um and yeah, like they said the, the majors were great. And then the, the Solheim Cup, you know, after Europe coming back after being being so far behind and the and then the men, the Ryder Cup, like you say, it was it was just absolutely fantastic. Great to get a bit of revenge after um what happened at uh, Whistling Straits as well. Um where we got absolutely uh, done in. Um but again, quality of golf and and great to see some younger guys coming through as well for Europe. Um which I'm sure we'll talk about a few of them uh, later on. But but yeah, it was a nice distraction after the well, you can say distractions is the kind of constant politics that um, they're in the background, um, but yeah, great, great year. Hopefully, we can we can talk more about golf this year. Yeah, Ben, I, I do think as as Andy says, quality of golf. As I say, I thought the Ryder Cup was superb. But I just think this year, every golf event there was a lot. There was always something exciting. I I don't think we've had that. And I think it's it has been very much behind the scenes stuff. But th- this year just felt a bit different. Yeah, I think like for me, I think. Kind of, like obviously, we mentioned the before the other the politics and all that. That that seemed to get me interested more in in things like the PGA Tour events and the DP World Tour events on on the telly and and yeah, there was so many good events. I think the Scottish Open was probably one that for me that was 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 amazing to see Rory and and Robert McIntyre and, and that at an mm-hmm. event too. Homegrown golfers going at it and our uh, and our our home open, the Open itself. Was probably a bit of a damp squib, if you, if I'm being honest. I think Brian Harmon winning that was a wee bit like, you know, could have been much more exciting on a Sunday, but he kind of played good golf, fair play to him, uh, and then it was set up quite nicely for the the Ryder Cup, as we said. And um, I guess team golf is different, and I know we, I'm sure we'll talk about team golf at some point in this podcast. And um, 
I love watching the Ryder Cup. It's it's, it's days I take days off work to to sit down and and watch it and don't try and miss never miss a shot. So yeah, it's been a good year and I think it'll be even better this year personally. Yeah, we it's a it's a funny sort of thing. We've we're recording the podcast and there's been a a big move in terms of the the kind of politics side of golf. And I want to get your thoughts on this. Keith Pelly out today as the DP World Tour CEO. He's been replaced by Guy Kinnings, who I think was very involved in the kind of Ryder Cup kind of, kind of set up. So mm-hmm. what do we think of this now when we hear like that <clears throat> DP World Tour CEO leaving? I think it's always going to be a big thing. But I think now with what we're kind of thinking might happen this year, is this as big a story as we, we think it could be? Or is this you know, reading too much into something? Don't know. I don't. Um, I don't really envy his his position over the last few years since COVID. Really, I mean, when the PGA Tour came on board um, with the DP World Tour, I mean, really, the DP World Tour is a feeder tour now for the PGA Tour. Um, he, he's just really a pawn in, in all of this. He's he's involved in all the meetings, but he's really the the, the most the, the kind of least most important person in the room, really. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but um, as a major um, kind of revelation, you know, he, he is in charge of of the, the the European Tour, DP World Tour. Guy Kinnings is very experienced. Like you say he's um, very involved with the, the Ryder Cup. I believe it was it was maybe even Keith Pelly's understudy. Yeah, obviously quite famous for being Colin Montgomery's manager as well. So he's been involved in high level golf for a long time. So. Um, other than that, I don't really know too much about him to be honest. But it's it's just where the DP World Tour is at the moment. Um, they chose to side with the PGA Tour when they you could argue that the better option for them would have been to side with Live. Um, but who knows? It's um they they made the decision now, but in the grand scheme of things they are just really feeding off scraps of whatever the P- the PIF and whatever the PGA Tour give them, really, to be honest. So um, I wish them all the best, but it's a, it's a pretty tough job, I think, in, in the current climate. He's, he's went on to to become the CEO of Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment, so he will be involved with the, the Maple Leafs and the NHL, Raptors and the NBA and Toronto FC and the MLS. But, uh, Ben, I just want to touch on a couple of things that, they, he obviously did, that Keith Pelly did for the European golf circuit. He brought in, obviously, the Rolex series. He was instrumental in DP World <coughs> uh, title partnership with the main tour that's obviously seen the European tour become the DP World Tour. The mixed events, such as the Scandinavian Classic and things like that, is probably the two most successful Ryder Cups in European history in Paris and Rome. He was involved in that. So it does leave a good legacy in terms of the European tour has progressed, it's, it's become more global since he's come in, so it has been a force of good for golf. No, absolutely, I, th- I think you see it with the, the events like in Dubai and things like that, that are, that are great to watch, and uh, especially with the, the kind of the, the FedEx Cup, uh, not the FedEx Cup, what's the race to Dubai, sorry, to Dubai. Um, with that, that, that seems to have got the, kind of, the bigger players interested in the DP World Tour. Um, when we probably would have thought that they were maybe going to probably fall away, focus on the PGA, uh, but that seems to bring guys like Rory, Tommy Fleetwood, um, John Ram, Tyrrell Hatton all back into the fold, and, and that's all they can really grasp at, really, to, to keep the, the fans entertained, and, and yeah, I think you're right, it's, it's one of those ones where it's got a legacy, but for me, I think it's probably good to see a bit of a change in the guard. Uh, and and golf in, in general, Martin Summers is is leaving the the RNA, which uh, again someone who has a a great um, legacy to leave there behind, but maybe get some fresher new new bodies in to to change things up because from what we've seen we live, that's what they're trying to do, and and they can't rest in the laurels the DP World Tour, they've got to go and make hay and try and make it much more interesting, make get the fans in and get people watching it on the telly and things like that. That it, it obviously drives the, the the players to want to, to play on it. Yeah, absolutely. I think obviously like as we say, with the I'm sure we'll talk when Live comes up, I think we will be talking a bit more about the what we think could happen this year. So I, I do think it is obviously a change that 
I think it's a surprise. I don't think a lot of people saw this coming. I thought I'd, there was a really good interview with uh, Alan Shipnock, who probably one of my favourite people to listen to in golf, and he was very yeah. surprised about this. So the fact that he the kind of he seems to be the most knowledgeable, in my opinion, anyway, in terms of the kind of golfing journalist. I think even he was surprised, and that kind of says a lot. I don't think a lot of people seen this coming, but I think there are things going on that we might not be privy to that we could be soon. But we do have four majors, as always, this year to to do. Uh, we're going to look at a preview. We're going to talk about Masters, obviously, Augusta, as, as every year. US PGA goes back to Valhalla. Uh, US Open goes to Pinehurst, and the Open returns to Royal Troon, which for three years, for boys, will be very, very good for us, I would say. So it's, that'll, be a, that'll be a good day out. <laughs> that's going to be, I'm hoping it's going to be a good week out, but it's it's going to be obviously really, really exciting. Andy, in terms of the, the majors, I'm going to just ask you, I'm not going to ask you to, to pick all four winners if you don't have yet. I've only got three written down, but I've got half an eye. I've got one really strong fancy. Masters, US PGA, US Open and Open, which you can uh, Pecking order for them, and who do you see kind of performing well in them this year? Um, probably a heart reel in my head, but I, I just love to see Rory winning at Augusta. As I, just, I think most people would. Um, I like what he said. How he's going to play a little bit more leading into Augusta. Um, he's obviously came off the. The role he had on the PGA Tour advisory board as well, so I think he's able to focus a bit more. I think he's admitted himself, he's and that's been a, a major drain on him. So I like what I'm, what I'm hearing. Obviously, the, you know, the time of recording, he played fantastic this morning um, over in Dubai, but um, I, I just I just fear that if he's in contention, the pressure might just be a bit overwhelming for him, but. I just cannot see him going through a whole career not winning at Augusta. Just with the, the game he's got, it's just suited perfectly. So he's my pick for for there. Um, in no real particular order, I think Sheffield will win a major. Um, just by sheer weight of numbers, because he's just always there or thereabouts. Um, US Open might be a good bet for him. It's just a ball striker stream. Um. I'd love to see Hovland. I think he's primed and ready. Um, possibly Trin, something like that might might suit him. Um, kind of swashbuckling kind of style, you know. Um, and the, and down the links depending on the conditions. Um, and finally, I think Max Homer. I think uh, again, he's one of that group of players, a number of players who are just need that extra. But he he has to improve his major record. To be fair. Um, but just prime to for that next stage in their career. Um, I don't know between having Sheffield or one they'll they'll win or or Hovland. I'd love to see Hovland win the Open, but um, that's my kind of four four picks um for for this year. So don't bet um, a lot of money in that, folk. Nah, I kind of I'm with you. I'm I'm with you on one, but uh, I'll go to Ben. Oscar, I've got a really strong opinion on the Masters, but Ben, what's your thoughts on the majors this year? Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I feel like it's gonna be the year of the comeback. This is what I'm 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 pinning my hopes on. I think one of Justin uh, Thomas or John Spieth will will win a major this year. I think it'll be a year of the comeback. I don't know which one or which which tournament, but for me, I think both those lads have, have obviously got a lot to 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 try and about soul searching to do. But I think they've been scarred by the. The, the Ryder Cup themselves and, and wanting to prove a point next season. So I think they're definitely up there. One kind of maybe a wee bit left field, but I think Min Woo Lee, I think he's going to, I think he's, I yeah. think he's just ready to, to, to smash up. I think I really like him. I love what he does. I like him on, on Instagram and all that. He's a, he's a laugh and I think he, his golf is, is unreal. Um, would love to see uh, Rory win the Masters, like Andy said. Uh, but I think it might just come too soon for Rory. I just feel like that's my my, my feeling about him. And I love Rory McIlroy to bits, but I just feel like the Masters this season maybe too soon, maybe next year. Um, I'm writing them off already for the Masters. Imagine that. <laughs> that's, that's brutal. <laughs> but um, it'll be interesting to see. And the other one for me, John Ram. I think John Ram will 
come out firing this year. Uh, he's got lots to prove in terms of um, what he's been up to in the, in the summer. So I think he'll be coming out to prove a point and, and show that what he's all about, he's still there and he's still got the ability. We all know that, but he's got to prove the kind of, I guess, the casual golf fan that he's still, he's still the, the guy. I am very, very confident that Scottish Scheffler is going to win the Masters. I just think the fact that he's went with Phil Kenyon as his coach, putting and I don't know about you, but I watched the the Hero World Challenge, and they were talking a lot about his his change of stroke, and you have seen it. Yeah, I thought he putted superbly the the Hero World World Challenge, and I think the fact he's just with with Phil Kenyon, and I remember speaking to you about this. I think it was I think it was in the the run up to the US Open, maybe. He was so. I think he was. He's obviously his greens and regulation. I'm pretty sure was number one, and his putting was ninety eighth, and he was getting three top tens going into the US Open. That's unbelievable stats. If you, especially if he's not putting, I think the fact even if he half, if even if he's fifty percent better in terms of his putting, I think he's going to take all the beating at the Masters. Just looking through his four times at Augusta: nineteenth, eighteenth, first, and tenth. And I think it's the tenth that's most impressive because look how poor he was putting last year. The fact he finished in the top ten, I think he's, I think he's serious, and I think he's just coming on leaps and bounds. Just the fact that he's, he, he seems a lot more confident around the greens as well. You could tell when he got from the tee up until the, the edge of the green, he was, he was in total stroll mode, and then the minute he got in a green, he was a nervous wreck. I didn't see that last month, and I just think he could be really, really hard to beat at the Masters. I think I'm I'm just kind of going for the thing that Rory might never win a might never win a green jacket. I think I've just kind of went to that stage, but the fact that I think the the PGA is at Valhalla, and I think if, especially mm-hmm. obviously the fact he'll obviously want to win a green jacket, but I think he'll take a bit of confidence at the fact that he's going to the the Valhalla. What that was his last the last the scene he won his last major. I think if he's going to win one this year, I think it will be the PGA. That's the that's where the kind of conclusion I've come down on. US Open could really pick anybody. I think if I was to pick anybody for that, I would love to see Will Zalatoris come back to, to form if he's in good order. He's kind of one of, one, one of my ones to follow for the season, but I think that could be perfect for him. Pinehurst, really good, really good job. I think he could do fine. And somebody who has a good record at Royal Troon, in 2016, who I think is a far better player now than he was then, and I think he's been knocking on the door. Tony Finau for the Open. I think that could suit him. Mm. I remember watching him a few years uh, when it was at Trun. I think I can't remember if he was playing with Jimmy Walker, and I think Jimmy Walker had just won the PGA. or was going to win the P- or won the PGA that year, and everybody was talking about Walker was the man in this this yard, and this and Finau was just absolutely smashing it off the tee at Trun. I think he could be. I, I think. I, I think he's somewhat forty to one. I've already had a wee bit here. I savor mm-hmm. on that. I think he could be big for the Open this year. I just would really look forward to the the four majors. I think they're all at good courses as well. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm really. What do, you, what do you kind of think of in terms of kind of the big players like you mentioned? We'll, we'll mention Ram and the kind of love set up Andy, but like Scheffler, Rory, they're all now. I I think they've got a lot to prove as well. Hovland as well. They've all got a lot to prove because with Ram gone, they've got a chance to kind of be the. They've got they're going to have the chance to be the kind of top top dog in the rankings with the with Ram obviously losing ranking points unless he wins majors. So they, I think the the kind of big names in the PGA they've got they they're going to have a lot to prove as well. Yeah, I think that's what I mentioned. Kind of uh, like some Max Womer, um being in a, a group of players. I mean, can't really show play. Um, loads of players like that Morikawa even I know he's won two majors but he's kind of off the boil a little bit um, it's a, it's an opportunity for these players to kind of step up but I, I think um, I think like with Ram it, if you were to pick if you could almost pick the kind of Brooks Kepka kind of root of he, he's shown that it's, it's you know more than capable of a love player um kind of winning one of these kind of things all because you go to live I think 
for some people are a bit guilty, probably me included, um, of thinking when you went to live, that was you can almost put going into semi retirement. I think that's kind of changed a little bit now with the calibre of player that they're attracting. Um, but it'll be an interesting dynamic for him. I think you're absolutely right. He'll be absolutely fired up to come out. Um, so it, it gives a good dynamic to to the majors, and, it, and it's really the whole live PGA Tour. Um, kind of civil war really is adding an extra dimension to the majors, um, because you are getting everyone coming together only you know a handful of times a year. So, um, but yes, yeah, an opportunity for these players to to step up and 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 try and kind of you know grab the mantle that that, that maybe Ram has left you know and with the world rankings to get up there. Um, it'll be interesting to see that there's all it takes is one or two players to get really hot, as we've seen um, at the start of the season to win a few big events. They'll shoot up the rankings, but um, the majors are, are certainly elevated now, um, separated themselves from the normal kind of events. I think. Yep, absolutely. Ben, I think there's four really good courses we're going to this year. Like, obviously, Troon, just a brilliant level of excitement for us, but Pinehurst, Valhalla. I think they're obviously, as as Andy says, I think Pinehurst a, a dream for ball strikers. I think Valhalla is very similar as well. I'm really looking forward to to where the majors are at this year. I I think the the main thing about them is there's a good mix of courses this year. I think probably look like back last year there were kind of similarities, and uh, you you think to yourself, yeah. When it comes to the actual tournaments, you're probably going to get four different winners because of the type of games that each each require. So. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. As you say, Trin's gonna be Trin's gonna be amazing, I think, for, for us being being local and it's literally ten minutes my house. So it's gonna be a, a good week and um the buzz about the place will be exciting. I've not been to Trin at Open since I think two thousand and five, maybe. Is that the last two thousand and four? Two thousand and four. I've got a funny story about that actually. Do you know the first person to sign my autograph book that year? Who was that? Todd Hamilton. Oh, really? Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, he was the first person to sign my autograph book, and I asked him who he was. I, <laughs> I was going to say, I was no, one knew seven or eight. no one knew who he was, but apart from you, Scott, and you thought, I'll get this guy's autograph. Just I just because... went, he said on it, do you know the reason I knew who he was? Because he had a, he had a badge on it. I think it might have been his hat, actually. It said player. I was like, Right, right, okay. Boy. And that that's was, a decent hat. That's, that's a decent play. hat. I think the next person to sign my autograph book after that was Ernie Ailes, who was in the playoff. Right, right. So it's not uh, bad. I could. I only got one autograph. It was Podrick Harrington. So that was the only the only one I got there. But I uh, truly will be excellent. I'm I'm really looking forward to it, hopefully be involved for the, the week. Right. Let's move on to you know eye catchers that we could be be keeping an eye on this year. And we obviously with the kind of DP World Tour and the the PGA Tour last year, we had a lot of, of really eye catching players that came through. Probably the one big one was Ludwig Heberg. How impressed were you by him? And could he move on to the next level this year? Oh, I'm mega impressed. I just think he's a super You called it early, by the way. Uh, Fair play. You have no spokes since then. You, uh, you called it early. Uh, well, I uh, just, just, I can't believe he didn't win Rookie of the Year. When, I know, um, I'm the PGA Tour. of that. Unbelievable. Um, but anyway, he's, He's just so impressive. He's just his whole, the way he carries himself. I mean, he's not, I think he's 25, 24, 25. Yeah. He's not a, a kid or anything, but he's, the way he carries himself, his game, his driving is just, well, he's just phenomenal. Um, As long as he can stay fit and healthy, I, I, I've actually get him down to win a, I've got down my notes here, to win a major competition, not a major, but, Certainly, some like a players or a, yeah. an elevated event or something like that. Um, I just think that's I, I can see him almost being kind of next year's Victor Hovland, if that makes any sense. You know, just kind of maybe not quite absolute major champion uh, or elect as Hovland kind of is now, but uh, or hopefully going to be this year. But he's so impressive, Aberg. He's just the way he carried himself at the Ryder Cup was, was so impressive. Um. So yeah, I think he'll be he'll be a superstar. Yeah, Ben. I think what really impressed me about Aberg was obviously he literally came on the scene, and he was in the Ryder Cup, and nobody was questioning it because of just the talent he possessed and the way. I always go back and see that performance with Hovland against Scheffler and Kepka 
was probably the best of the Ryder Cup, just in terms of how how well the how obviously they linked up well because of their nationalities, but just look at how they take they take the world number one in Brooks Kepka. Now we could argue that those two were really off their game that day, but Holland and Aberg were so good, and they just to ha- to be that young and to be that talented. I I think this is a that's a potential superstar we're talking about. I I absolutely agree. I think he's. He's an absolute stud. He can he can go wherever he wants in terms of ability. He's got it all. He, he seems to carry himself off the course really well in terms of front of the media. He doesn't look too outspoken. He's not kind of a bit of a wild child. He's, he's, he's a pro. He's doing everything right in terms of uh, he's he's off the course attributes, but on the course he's he's, he's ridiculous. He, the fact he won a he won a um, a, a tour event and then gets in the Ryder Cup and then backs up his performance in the in the Ryder Cup. When 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 you look at that pick, you go that it's a wee bit of a risk. This boy could collapse and not be able to handle the pressure, but took it in his stride. Absolutely no bother at all. And, and I think that will stand in good stead for the likes of a major or uh, some of these bigger events like Andy was saying, because I think he'll he'll be able to cope. No bother at all. And and he he reminds me, I think, a lot a lot probably like Rory when Rory came through because yeah. uh, Rory was that kind of a bit quiet and uh, unassuming and didn't really go out his way Rory's obviously changed but that's because he's he's won, won all the majors and tournaments and he's, he's been this and that but I think Ludwig Eberg can be can be an absolute king of the course and, and if he wins that major you wouldn't be surprised I think that's the thing if he yeah. went, went out this year and won one you wouldn't be shocked and, uh, at all and, 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 and I don't really Exactly, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's it. He probably still has to. I don't know what his qualifying situation if he has to, if he'll still have to qualify, maybe. Is he? Where is he? I think he's 30th in the world, I think so. Right, so he'll be all right, yeah. Okay. And am I right in saying that all Ryder Cup players get a, a year? A year? I think they oh, do right? Yeah, yeah well, so, yeah. he's, he's going to be in then. So, yeah, I mean, if, he, if he wins a major, maybe none of us will be shocked about that at all. I and mean, you'll just stand and applaud because you knew it was coming at some point. I really like Eric Cole. I think Eric Cole is potentially another good American coming through, but the fact that Eric Cole was won the Rookie of the Year over him, I just think it's a nonsense. I don't understand it at all. From the fact that have, I think he, he's won four events this year, Aberg. Yeah, I think he's won four events. Yeah. Like to, to do that and not win Rookie of the Year, I think is a is ludicrous to me. And get, Nearly won another one, obviously. I think he'd beaten a playoff uh, look list. I just I I really think this the sky is the limit with this guy. But who's who's the other ones, Andy? Who's in your list? Can I to to kind of either <laughs> kick on or maybe come come under the radar this year? I think on the DP World Tour, I think uh, Rasmus Weigard, uh, Nikolai's brother. I think he's. I think just with the old sibling rivalry, you know, seeing his brother doing doing well, and um, obviously. Uh, performed so well at the Ryder Cup uh, and he'll be on the PGA Tour as well this year and I think Rasmus just missed out I believe um, so I can see him really um, really kind of stepping up this year I wouldn't be surprised if he won a couple of times in the DP World Tour um, PGA Tour wise it's not I wouldn't exactly call it a kind of breakthrough kind of year but um, I, I love watching Tom Kim. I just love watching his game. Um, he's number twelve in the world, so it's not exactly a, a huge shock. Um, if he's if he comes out and, and, and wins a few events, but I just uh, he's just uh, I was really impressed with him at the Presidents Cup as well. He's one of the standout players for them last um in twenty twenty two, and I just think he's in a great trajectory in his career. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him do do some some bits this year. Ben, what about yourself? Who's the who's the kind of ones flying under the radar that you you think could do well? I think when it comes to the DP World Tour, I think uh, Thriston Lawrence. I think um, watched him last year quite a bit. Watched him a bit even this morning in uh, in Dubai and thought he was playing excellent. And he won in I think he won in South Africa earlier this year, like last year. So he's got the the minerals for me. And I think he was probably one of those players that was knocking on the door again. He's PGA Tour card last season um, didn't quite get there but he'll be a, a personal be boy, boy by that and trying to get, to get into the PGA Tour but I think he's got the capable I think the other one for me in terms of PGA Tour Ryan Fox I think I've watched a lot of Ryan Fox mm-hmm. over, the, over the years mm-hmm. and I think he's a guy that 
he can go at that. He starts well, but he's not the guy that can maybe finish. But I think it's a wee year that he can maybe kind of go on and, and do a bit more in, in terms of the kind of post-cut um, rounds. Oh. I think you always see him come out the traps flying and uh, maybe he struggles a wee bit. But I, I really like what he does. I think he's a, he's a great player and I think he'll be he'll be one to watch. I already mentioned uh, Min Lee in terms of the majors and I think he'll I think he'll he'll be excellent. I honestly think I, I've got all my hopes in him this year for, for everything I think to be honest and I think he'll, he'll be good and I guess we'll probably talk about Bob McIntyre at some point. I think the fact he's made the decision to go to uh, to America and, and, and take his card, and he's obviously taking it really seriously. Not that he doesn't take the DP World Tour seriously because he's obviously went won a number of events, but I really hope for Bob to, to go out and do bits this year. Yeah, I've got a few. I, I quite like, I, I like, I think Min Woo Lee could be one, whether he's major contention, I'm not sure, but I think he could be. Potentially just a player who kind of kicks on to another level. He's always been kind of knocking at the door. Another one I really like, Sunjay, Sunjay M. Whether he's, again, major major level, I'm not sure, but so consistent. He's just, he's getting there. He's been, obviously, in the, he was second in the Masters, I think. Was it the, the COVID year? It was Dustin Johnson that won it, I'm sure. And he's won, he's he playing the President's Cup. I think Sunjay M could be one as well. I really like this guy. I think this guy could win a PGA Tour event this year. The big six foot eight, twenty twenty three amateur champ, Christo Lamprey. I think if you've if you've seen him, towering individual, hits That's the ball right. a mile. And he could be one, I think, as well. I think in terms of a player who could be major caliber, Cameron Young. I've thought yeah, I've been I thinking about Cameron that. Young. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that. My big one, I would love, as I said earlier, I'd love to see Will Zalatoris come back because I think he's got the talent. He's obviously just been hampered with injuries over the past couple of years. He has been knocking in the door. I think if he just gets a bit of, bit of luck with, with fitness, I think he could win a major this year. Let's move on to live golf. Now it's going to be a, a year that's been dominated. Probably was was early Christmas. We, well, before Christmas, we had the news that I think maybe surprised us a bit, but it was apparently it was coming for a while. John Ram made the, the decision to move to Live Golf. We don't know why, but we do really. But <laughs> Andy, I don't think we're surprised because it was touted for a while. But the fact that it's happened, I think a lot of things have, have turned have kind of tailspin a wee bit. I think Europe I think Europe need to seriously look at now the Ryder Cup situation. I think this could be just a massive butterfly effect. I think this is the one that could kind of flip it in its axis. Yeah, um, Cam Smith was was a big one, um, but this this is you know someone who's literally one of the top three players. Best. Do you think outside the Rory and Tiger, this is the big this is the biggest one they could have got. Um, yeah, probably. Um, I think uh, I think he's seen. What's coming? I think um, there's going to have to be some reconciliation in their common ground somewhere. But they're already live or the PIF and, and the PJ two already in discussions about you know potentially merging or however way that would be. In the PJ two have obviously got other um, looking at other. Um, ways to, to fund um their tour as well. Um I think Ram's just been pretty opportunistic. He's been offered four, five hundred, six hundred million dollars, whatever it is. He might take a year or two out of playing regular PGA Tour golf, but there there has to be some reconciliation along the way. So who wouldn't, you know, take the take take the money and and, and um and go with it. Um, I think some of the kind of kind of aspects of it. I think the politics that are reading between the lines. It was very much Rory McIlroy and Jay Monahan and and all that bunch of sports people for it uh, for the PGA Tour. He was never really mentioned, despite being one of the top players, or or obviously being the one of the top players, and being the best player in the world for for a long period of time as well. And I don't know whether his nose has put out a joint a little bit about that. He's certainly disillusioned with the with the whole leadership of the PGA Tour, as a lot of the players are. And I think he's just 
he's just decided to to he's seen an opportunity and he, he's taken it. And I don't really think anyone can can blame him. I just think from a golf viewing perspective, I just hope that that we can start watching these best players play. You know, twenty times a year instead of four times a year. Um, I think everyone would win out of that. Um. But I'm very interested to see what, what's going to happen now. But he, he could very definitely be the straw that breaks the, the camel's back for, for, for this uh, situation, I think. Ben, one of my big predictions is, I'm, am I right in saying Liv have 11 individual events? I think Ram could finish top five in all of them. And you can get 14 to one on that. I think he could just go here and absolutely dominate it. Like, yeah, I mean, you've got to think he is that kind of player that, that's got that ability. Yeah, probably, though, what I would say about that is we probably thought the same about Cam Smith. And Cam Smith had a bit of a... He had a decent season, I think, the first season, but then kind of off the mm-hmm. ball the second season. So I think, um, I think yeah, it just depends how much the actual format and the, and the competition itself gets John Ram up for it. Because see, once you've got that kind of money... To, Will it that will it bother you that much? Like mm-hmm. playing, yeah, you in your PG to uh, PG tour events or in your majors, you're playing for a prize pot there. And let's not be kidding; these guys are like, I think um, Rory used the the phrase a personal contract, um, employees or some of that. I, I'm paraphrasing, but you can imagine that they're businessmen; they're there, there to make dough, uh, which which we all respect. And I think that's the thing about John Rama for me would be the concern is has he. Will he be up for it? I think he's made a clever decision to move, given he's exempt for the next five years in the majors. He's got that in his locker that he knows he can play the majors and have to worry about trying to qualify and turning up at Barassi to play to try and qualify for the Open and things like that. You know, he's not got not get that. To, wow, um... you, that would be that would be. <laughs> well, that was. I mean, that was that was like last year, wasn't it? There's was a few names that, that yeah. popped up, and you're all just like, oh, wow, this is. I can't believe this is happening. But uh, yeah, and I think. I think it will be interesting to see how John, but he again, like I said in the beginning, he's he's got a point to prove, and he, and he has to do that. Mm-hmm. But I think for me, about Liv in general, it's just more about well, folk actually watch it. Well, is, is John Ram enough to make folk like pay attention to Liv? I, I'm not so sure personally. I, I still not 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 sure. I, and I love golf. I love like watching any golf that's on the TV, but there's something about the Liv thing that I don't know that. Even John Ram doesn't excite me that much to, to go and turn that on. Right, let's play a wee hypothetical game here. By the end of the year, will the merger have taken place? Will it be an effect, Andy, yes or no? Um, there might be something in place, but I think it might take a couple of years to implement it um, because of sponsors, uh, obligations, all this kind of stuff. But... Uh, yeah, I think there's got to be. They've pushed, is it pushed it back to the end of March now. Yeah, I think, I think there's 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 the there's Supreme Court. I think there's um, because they cut off what cut off was the thirty first of December. That's mm-hmm. when they, they spoke about it initially. But I think there, I think there will be something in place. Um, there has there has to be. I mean, what, without getting you know political or anything like that, live the, the whole aim of the PIF is to get into corporate America and the PGA mm. Tour is their vehicle to do that. Um it's unsustainable. I mean their turnover last year was some like was it not ninety three million pounds or something like that and they're paying players four hundred million dollars. <laughs> it, it's that that's where the whole thing for me just like, like Ben was saying, I love watching golf and uh, one of the only live golf events I watched was the very first one because it was, you know, and I lasted about an hour or so and then put it off and it's a whole unsustainable, it's not real. That's yeah. what the kind of feeling I get from it. Um, and I, I, I think, guys, I take your point about Ram just going nuts over there, point on that tour, because I think he is just the competitiveness within him. You see him at the Ryder Cup. I mean, he was an absolute monster at the Ryder Cup. It's, I love watching him um, when he's in full flow. That I love seeing him being passionate on the course. And I just hope that that continues um, with his, maybe the team element will, will appeal to him if, if he gets to bring in a couple of teammates, that's another thing. Don't know who he's going to be playing with. Um, 
I, I just it, it's just a whole unsustainability thing for, for me that, that that turns me off from, from watching live. But I think there's got to, there has to be an end game that that suits all parties, um, and I just hope it does come sooner rather than later. Ben Rory McIlroy, I don't know if you watched it, the the interview he did with the overlap. He said something really interesting that I think this does make sense. And cricket have done this really well with the the Indian Premier League, where <coughs> we have the idea of like, for example, you play your county cricket, you play your your test your test for your national team, and then kind of end of the year you do the IPL, where you go to India, take a sum of money, and you're playing there for two months and. It doesn't really affect anything else. And when he when he said that, I'm thinking, is that him saying that, or is that what they think the end game is? Because if it was that, if you were to say like we do the eight months of the year, you've got the finish the FedEx Cup say at the end of December, end of September, and October through to December, you've got eight team events we live. I think a lot of people would get on board with that. I think that would work, but. Is that going to be implemented, or is that just Rory saying this is what I want, this is what I've tried to do, that's why I'm off? It's. I thought his interview was very interesting because I've never seen him as vocal about that, and I've never seen him can I just release like that? If that makes sense. Yeah, I think I think the one thing about Rory is he there, there has been that shift in, in his his thought process and his views. He's he's probably had to come out and be strong and and say all the negative things. There's obviously things that have happened behind closed doors between the likes of, of him and, and Greg Norman and um and even publicly on, on Twitter we think with folk like Ian Polter and stuff like that. You've seen kind of bits back and forth where we've had had a wee bits of uh, ding dongs and he's obviously realised it's probably not worth the hassle. Rory's gonna be a multi millionaire golfer, regardless if he's played on live or not, and that's his thing. He's wanting to go and win when Championships and be remembered as, as Rory McIlroy, the the greatest golfer that ever lived. If he can, and obviously Tiger's going to be in a conversation all day long. But Rory's idol is Tiger, and that's his his thing. So I, I respect his his defence, the PJ. I think he, he's took a lot of stick for that. And, but yeah, going to point, going back to your point about the IPL, I think that's a, I personally thought it was a great idea. The first time I'd heard I mentioned it, I guess you say, it was on the on the overlap, and I sat and I thought to myself. I can get behind that. Like, mm-hmm. I can absolutely get mm-hmm. behind that. Um, if all the players were involved, um, there's maybe like the kind of the way the, the the IPL does it with the kind of the, the kind of draft um, type format and things yeah. like that. Um, I could really, I could really get behind that. I mean, I could, I think that'd be great. Uh, I think the one thing for me though that, that that Liv seems to struggle with is actually the market. And although they tell you it's all this great and wonderful it's, it's it's loud music it's pints and um everywhere and um shotgun starts and all. but can anyone ever tell you when lives on the telly it's not on the telly right but i mean, I mean it's, it's on the app isn't it? it well it's on the app and, and it started off on youtube then they got an app because they thought that would be a great idea to have their own app but then quite quickly re- remembered that it's better to put on youtube but i can't tell you when a live event starts i you only know. find it when i'm watching youtube for something else, probably a, I don't know, a Rick Shields video or a Danny Maud video or something like that that I already brush up in my game and go up. Oh, there's Liv. I'll watch that. But I think, um, I think for me, that's the thing that you need to work on is, is getting the getting the times out there, getting the names out there, get, getting the players to tell you as well and getting them to really advertise it. Because right now, I don't, the numbers are shocking. And the one thing I always say, I mentioned the TV, why? why why is it not on the TV? That's the bit that because it probably isn't getting the numbers. <laughs> yeah, and that that sorry, jump in, but you made a great point there, Ben. That 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 adds a whole thing to me that is it's not really serious. It's not really real because it doesn't make sense. You know, it just doesn't seem to make sense. And I think I think what a lot of people kind of forget a wee bit as well when when. When Mickelson and Dustin Johnson, or when they first, especially Mickelson, when these guys were trying to sue the PJ Tour as well. They were trying to, you know, they, they left and they were trying, and there was a lot of bad blood there, and there was a lot of things said on both sides. And I think now with the, the there, there has to be a softening of, of attitudes on both sides, but 
it's a bit nauseating personally when you hear like Mickelson come out and Greg Norman come out and saying, "Oh, I think it's great that Rory's fell on his sword and all that kind of stuff." You're just like, yeah, I think people have got some kind of short memories when it when it comes to this, but ultimately, it could be the best thing that that that's happened to golf really as a sport if they do all come together. Well, you boys were saying the IPA idea is absolutely fantastic. I mean, the draft would be incredible to watch. You know, we all get excited when the Ryder Cup teams are getting announced with the wild card picks and yep. stuff. Imagine that times, you know, whatever. I mean, people have even rooted like a live VPGA Tour event. I mean, yeah. how good would that be? I mean, there's there's a lot of little things that they could do, but they have to come to the table and 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 get it sorted out for for the good of for the good of the sport. I mean, golf's a niche sport. Golf really can't afford to be paying people six hundred million dollars. You know, it's just it's just it's not the NFL. You know, it, it's unsustainable. Um, but we'll, we'll just need to see what happens. But hopefully, uh, sooner rather than later. Right, one man to mention before we get into our final wee predictions, Ben, as the one and only Tiger Woods seems to be a bit more back to his health in terms of how he's been and how he seems to be more. Obviously made a big decision to, to part with Nike. I never thought I'd ever see the day Tiger Woods wasn't wearing Nike and that could be a weird one to see. What do we think of Tiger? I don't think he'll play all four majors, but I certainly think he'll play a couple. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks like he's, he's back to um, back to decent health. What that looks like for Tiger Woods, we're not sure, obviously, when it comes to, to walking around the courses. I know that was a big, big issue for him previously, but he's had the surgeries. Um, I seen him dicking about a YouTube um, channel with someone earlier on today, doing golfing from his knees and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, well, he must be all right if he's he's, ha- he's happy. He might mess about like that, and uh, that that's a good thing for golf and, and for us fans who who have watched Tiger from uh, probably inception for for a lot of us. I've probably seen Tiger's kind of first events and yeah. um, seen him at different event things and yeah, iconic. Yeah, I think for me is a. I'm a big, a big Nike fan, whether it's trainers or football tops or whatever, but it was sad to see uh, that happen. But he's probably just going to come back with a TW brand and it's going to be his own thing, I mm-hmm. assume. It's not going to be, um, you know, have all the, the kind of image rights and all that and intellectual property around that anyway. So I'm sure he'll, he'll be fine. He'll, he'll, get, he'll still get, be able to buy our, our red polls. Don't worry, I think we'll be, we'll be okay on that front. Andy, he seems to be, just kind of reading here, he seems to be kind of, aiming for the Genesis Invitational, which is obviously not, uh, Riviera is not far from, from where his headquarters is for mm-hmm. the, the Tiger Woods Foundation, so I would say that's a good chance that's where he starts, but yeah. where do we think we'll see Tiger this year? Do you think we'll see him at Augusta, Royal Troon? Where's, what, what do we want to see um, from Tiger this year? Um, it's a, that's a good question. I, I think just being healthy, I think, um, and and still relevant in golf, you know. I think the PGA Tour need need him more than ever now. Um, but I think, uh, I mean, he's, he was pretty bullish after the Hero was it, or was mm-hmm. it after the, the PNC. He said, "Is it once a once a month or so? Once yeah. twice a month or so?" Yeah, I mean, he was quite. Month, I was quite yeah. surprised. At, once a month, yeah. Which I was quite surprised at that, but. Um, I think definitely Augusta. I think it's a one course where, if the conditions are right, you know, you know, I'm as, as big a Tiger fan as, as as you can get, and I'll be I'll be sitting with my, my red uh, mock turtleneck on in the Sunday if he's in contention. But um, it's a one course where if conditions are right, he knows it like the back of his hand. Yeah. Um, he'll do. I think he'll play there until he, he literally can he walk. Um. The rest of them, I'm not sure. He's one of Valhalla, obviously. We beat Bob May in 2000. That's, again, phenomenal watching. I uh, remember watching that. Um, and, yeah, Trun's not overly difficult walk. You know, it's pretty flat. So, I would... Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't like pine horses. an overly stressful walk as well. So, it wouldn't surprise me if, as long as his game's okay, um, he'd, he'd probably play all the majors. But it'll be interesting to see. I mean, I think it's just... We want to see him, even if it's like one or two good rounds, you know, per per event. And I don't think anyone could have any expectation of him winning. Um, but just being 
like you said, staying relevant, you know, proving that he can still do it a few times a year. I think that is probably where we're we're at just now with him. Um, but it's always a difficult one. You see it in all sports, don't you? You know when, uh, but you know the head will tell you you can still do something, but the body just just breaks down. And I don't think there'll be too many people around about him who'll be too keen to say to him, "Tiger, I think you should give it. You know, mm-hmm. should call it a day. I think he'll be giving all the encouragement he can, he, he can to keep going." So, um, yeah, just stays relevant and 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 has a few gives us a few moments. I think that's all I can really really hope for for this year. Probably. Yep, absolutely. Right. Let's let's do some final wee predictions before we wrap up. A couple of of big shouts that we'll we'll maybe revisit at the end of the year. Ben, give us your your two big shouts. Which are two two or three big confidence things going into this year in golf? What are we what are we thinking? So I'm going for the year they come back. Justin Thomas and uh, Jordan Spieth to to have a great year and and win something pretty important. I'm going. To, in fact, I'm going to go with a major. I'm going to one of them. One of them will win a major. That's my my big show of the year. Come back, come back season for one of those boys. Andy, what you got? I think we've covered it before. I think uh, Ludwig to, to break out and, and hover into one of major. That's my two, two I think. Future of, of certainly the European Ryder Cup team is, is in pretty good hands, but love to see these two guys um, certainly hover into one of major and, and Ludwig just to keep going in the, the trajectory he's on just now. I think that would be my two my two hopes for this year. Do you think Hovland gets number number one at some point in the season? I think Sheffler's just going to top five or top three death all year, so I can't see anybody shifting him, to be honest. Um, I think Rory's a bit too too inconsistent at times, but I, I, he just he, he just hangs about all the time, Sheffler. I just can't see him. And like Scott said earlier, if he can somehow put average, you know, the, the field the, the field average, he'll win, you know, if he's ball striking, keeps up. But I'd, l- I'd love to see it. I'd love to see a European uh, young, uh, number one again. Um, other than Rory, you know, it'd be great for, again for European golf for the Ryder Cup team. But um, Sheffield will be a hard man to move, I think. Right, I've got a couple. I think I'm going to go to the LPGA Tour. I think Lala Vu, who won two majors last year, could win two majors this year. I think she's, I think she's the one. She could be the next Annika Sorenstam. I'm that good. I think she could be the real deal. Honestly, I think she's different class to what I saw what I saw of her last year. The Olympics is in Paris, isn't it? Mm, Le yeah. Golf National. Who was part of a famous partnership there that that took it by storm in twenty eighteen? That I think we would all Fleetwood. love to see win. I think Tommy Fleetwood wins Tommy the gold medal. Mm. All right, okay. I, I, I think yeah, behind that. that. I think that's mm. my big call. Yeah. I, I think that that atmosphere. I think that sort of atmosphere will be right mm. up his street. I think if Tommy Fleetwood's going to win anything this year, I think he's going to win a gold medal. My other one I'd written down is Tiger Woods to play all four majors, but I think just to see them play one's enough for me. Just mm-hmm. to tell, just we all want to see Tiger as as we know, but and Scotty Sheffler to win the Masters, I think is I'm going to go into say that's my banker of the year in sport. I think Scotty Scheffler winning the Masters is my big call. A lot of times, I think even if he puts half well, I think Augusta. I think we saw what it was like two years ago, and when he, when he, he potted really well to be fair two years ago when he won it. I think he's going to win the Masters. That's my big call. And that was our first Golf Talk episode of 2024. It's been a pleasure, as always, to, to do it. We'll be back with a lot more golf shows this year. Uh, we'll be launching our own golf channel, which I'll be announcing in the next couple of weeks, so stay tuned for that. And I want to thank my guest, first of all. Thank you very much, Andy Fulham. Yeah, thanks very much, boys. Really enjoyed that. Um, kind of well, it's your appetite for the season ahead, so... Um... Yeah, let's let's uh, hope we can we can have as, as good as golf last year and, and, and concentrating the golf on course would be would be pretty good for this year. Absolutely, and it's tremendous as always. Thank you very much to Ben Grant, mate. It's been a pleasure. Cheers, Scott, and I'll see you all soon, hopefully for a we'll be, few days out. We'll be there at soon. Thank you very much, everyone. Much tuned in. Please follow us on social media, and if you want more content, then subscribe to our Patreon channel and subscribe to us on YouTube and our podcast. Thanks, folks. 